The easiest and fastest way to make a webtoon in Clip Studio Paint Pro version 2, which in theory means a low pen pressure, non textured pen for fast, minor, effortless fill, and so it blends in with 3D models, asset materials and references, 3D models, limited character design, shading assist, cell shading, and other efficient features, as well as an all capitalized font style so we don't have to spend time capitalizing, and lastly, export to webtoon from Clip Studio. Clip Studio Paint version 2.0's head modeling feature might present us with the easiest way to create characters, although it's still a detached head so we would have to draw the body and head at separate instances. Character models seem to be more useful, especially if school uniforms are involved, and it's more beneficial to have a modern setting and plot that is least time consuming, maybe in a school so you only have to draw one outfit, a uniform, for all your characters. So I roughly figured out a story like that for this webtoon experiment. The genre also matters, which probably means romantic comedy or a slice of life because it takes longer to draw action poses compared to regular ones. Effects are also something to take into account for either fantasy or action, but we can't make the webtoon too plain in case no one reads it. I also suck at the romance genre, so I'll include some other elements. I didn't mean for that to happen, how do I fix it? The school will be called Janini Art. Ninja Art. Kinda sounds like Ninja Art. The characters will kind of look like this. I made sure to make the character design as symmetrical as possible so that when we flip her, we don't need to draw a drastically different left side compared to her right side. We should probably consolidate to one lip and skin shade to save time. We're gonna layer mask this character so that we can color it conveniently without going over the liner. Control click the character folder to select and mask. What are the requirements for shading assist? You need a liner layer set to reference and a color layer. It looks like they have a lot more than one color layer. I don't really know how it works, but I'll figure it out later. Upon experimenting, it's faster to use soft airbrush for the lips and hard airbrush for the sclera. Of course, it's faster to just not color the lips at all, like a lot of other webtoons, but they just look so pale. I'm putting every tool I used in order of use to quick access for a smooth workflow. When you're designing your characters, it's best to separate flat colors into different layers so that you can switch to new colors immediately by converting to drawing color. And make sure you save your color somewhere in the order of use so that you don't have trouble finding them later. Obviously, use all the shortcuts on your keyboard and tablet for a fast workflow. The line art is actually bothering me a lot because it's not the exact vibe I wanted for the story, so I think I'm going to switch to a pen that has a little bit more opacity and brush size variation for a softer feel to match the genre a little. I realize it's better to color the sclera after the eyes and hair so that it doesn't get in the way of and fill. Wait, she's not supposed to go to this school. And she kinda looks creepy. It's okay, let's figure out how to use shading assist. So we set the line art layer as a reference layer and shift click the color layers into a folder. I was probably supposed to click on the folder. I gotta say, it's very strange. Oh, I should check Refuse Lines on Reference Layer. Jesus, what happened? Oh, you can make the light source bigger. I guess it doesn't matter where you put the directional light. 
I don't know if we can use this to be honest, there's 4 new layers so it would be tedious to edit, especially since we don't know what colors are on the layers and we do need to edit them because the lines come out wobbly. Maybe we can liquefy, but this takes too long and it's tedious to color check to edit the layers every time. I don't really know how to feel about this, it's too ambiguous to sacrifice quality for speed. If the same 4 lighting layers are generated every time, then we can save those colors to use for editing in the future, but the lighting colors should change based on the environment colors, so that's kind of impossible. Let's come back to this later. I always thought the width should be 800 pixels, but I think 1600 is the meta for the project file, so it can be better quality before shortening it to 800 during export. We gotta preset it so we can use it again. If you go to view on screen area for webtoon, we can sort of see how the panels are portrayed on a phone screen. I feel like this is too long for a phone screen, but I'm not entirely sure. I changed my line art tool yet again from a pen to a pencil with similar pressure settings because this still doesn't look right. Sketch out the panels first so you know what you're doing. I apply text at this time, copy and paste it from my script because writing or typing text out is insane. For the font, I just downloaded some free capitalized commercial use comic fonts. After the downloads, we have to install the text file one by one. I don't know which font formats are compatible with Poop Studio Paint, but I know TTF is one of them, so the installed fonts will show up on the font list the next time you open the program. I think there is a way to show only the fonts we want on the list, so we don't have to scroll through all of the system fonts that we can't even delete. Open the font list settings dialog and select display font name in specific font to preview and check all the ones that you want. Then we can select the list we made. There's no alignment function, so we'd have to bring up the grid. Actually, they added it in 2.0. I wonder how it works. There are so many options. Okay, it's align horizontal centers to center the text, although something is off, either the grid or the text, but I'm sure it's not noticeable. What is the title of this webtoon? Should it just be Ninja Art Academy? NA? Why does it make two different text layers? Do we have to apply it to selected text? No, this is not it. For borders, there's a how to add option, so I thought there would be something like that for texts, but I guess not. Balloons have it too, maybe it's just hidden? I think I found it. Detect position, what does that do? It seemed like it was set to create layer always. I finally fixed it. I add the balloon tails in later because the balloons usually get moved around after they're placed. If we add tails early on, they're also going to have to be directed elsewhere every time. Applying poses from assets to a character is the fastest way to start sketching if you don't already know how to draw the pose from scratch of course, although a lot of the times you'd have to pose it yourself with the pose scanner and the hand scanner if you can't find what you're looking for. It's faster than posing manually. For the sketch, I actually don't use a raster layer, I use vector layers for both the sketch and the liner. I haven't seen anyone use vector layers for sketching, but there's no reason not to because you erase so much faster. A lot of artists use a soft tool to sketch and switch to a pen for the line art, but I personally find the line art process to be much easier if my sketch looks almost identical to the line art, so I just use the same tool. Remember to look in your materials folder for a ton of default materials including balloons, effect lines, and backgrounds before downloading from assets. The maximum canvas length is 50,000. We usually have to combine multiple different 3D objects to create our background, but sometimes we can use a full background, like this default park. There's a lot more character materials than I thought there were, although why is his shirt? Applying them is another issue. 
If anyone knows how to change the face of character models, please tell me. It's best to have a separate background project file for simplicity because 3D materials can make Clip Studio Paint very laggy. I use an auto action to convert 3D backgrounds to lines and tones, then adjust the color and alpha threshold. I'll duplicate the 3D layer and rasterize it to create a color layer. The original colors of 3D backgrounds can be very desaturated, so I would suggest using either a tone curve or raise the contrast and saturation. These are easier to use than the tone curve. You could also use all three of them. I'm using separate tone and correction layers instead of applying them on the same layer so that I can change them at any time. It's easy to get used to a certain amount of contrast and not recognize that it's too much until the next day. Make a new layer on top of the correction layer so that you can color pick and edit the parts that are very strange, so it looks less like you just rasterized a 3D background to use as the color layer, but also try to blend in your edits with the rest of the image so that it doesn't look out of place. What? I like to create background image materials to reuse. First, hide the paper layer, then merge visible layers to a new layer. Register the new layer as an image material. Now we can drag it onto any canvas from wherever we saved it. When we transform raster layers, however, anything outside of the canvas gets cut off. To prevent that, we can convert it to an image material layer. Actually, there's probably a way to save it as one in the first place. Maybe if we select scale up down. It worked. Hold shift to snap the frame line to certain angles. This works for all the line tools like figures and gradient tools as well. I just realized the characters I designed don't even appear in the first episode, so there was really no point in making them because this series can't have more than one episode right now. In fact, it's probably better for it to have no episodes. I was working on an experiment before this one, but I had to get this video out first because version 2 came out with efficient features, and uploading Nin Giart Academy episodes might hinder the project I was already working on. In fact, this very video will probably hinder my first experiment, so I can't really work on this series until I'm done with that, which will take months. Because a part of that video was recorded before this one, in that video, you'd see me struggle a lot making a webtoon for the first time in a while. I don't know when it will be posted though. Is anyone else just really bad at line art, like really slow at it? It took me a while to figure out how it even works because for the longest time I felt like my line art turned out worse than my sketch, but I realized it was because the line art is supposed to have more lines than the sketch. Because my sketch was more detailed than my line art, the line art could only look worse which is why I overcame this predicament by making the sketch just like line art so I could copy it exactly. I can't believe that even when I'm almost done with the line art, I still haven't figured out what pen to use for it. I can't get it to look how I want it to be because I don't accurately know what to change. The problem is that it somehow feels a little watery and I want it to be dry. I'm gonna switch one last time and if it still doesn't look right, I'll look in assets. Okay, that looks fine and I actually did search assets and downloaded 10 other brushes that were all not what I was looking for so I'll just stick to this one. Can I change the line art on the other ones to make it look like this one? No? Mm. 
Well, I guess it's just gonna switch in the middle of the episode. It's probably not even that noticeable. I'm going to try to color on one layer. I don't need to tell you guys to use bucket jewels, right? That's pretty basic. You'd be insane to color webtoons manually. The problem with these fill tools is that the edge of the canvas doesn't get filled. I don't know if you can see on the video, but it's incredibly annoying and if someone knows how to fix it, please tell me. Tweaking the tools didn't work because although it solves that problem, it creates others. Like does it make sense that I need to have 5 fill tools just to cover each one's flaws? Time to mask so we can be free. I think I figured out a better way to deal with the edge issue. If you use a bucket, it does fill the edge, so you could refer other layers and then enclose and fill. I couldn't find a lined asset brush that fit my needs, so I ended up using the layered border effect. So the question still is, should we use shading assist? That looks ugly, not gonna lie. Um, yeah, no, I'm not gonna use shading assist because I need to edit it anyway, and it's tedious to go back and forth between normal and multiply. If we could apply it to every panel with one button, then it would be worth using, but then we'd only have one lighting orb to use for a long canvas, so if we take that into consideration and apply it to each panel, we'd have to merge the layers with the same blending mode together each time or else there would just be too many layers and that's too complicated for me. So I thought of the fastest way to shade and light manually in the prettiest way possible and there's two options. The first one is if we want to shade, light, and highlight on one layer. Actually, before I show these, I should probably explain the origin because I think it's some sort of industry secret or it used to be. It was originally a shading method that I figured out how to use after rewinding this part of a webtoon artist Chu Hei Young's stream 50 times and testing it out myself a few years back. I thought you just needed a white layer below and a clipped gradient map layer above, but the most important factor that she didn't mention was that the end of the map had to be white for this to work, and the reason this works is because white on multiply is transparent. I thought this was the most insane shit I've ever seen in digital art because this meant that we could apply a lot more colors with basically the same amount of time and effort. If you haven't already noticed, what this is supposed to do is convert black to colors on your gradient map based on the visibility of your stroke. In this case, if you paint lightly, the color would be yellow, and if you apply more pressure, the color would be purple. You don't need to switch colors, all you need to use is black because this is a gradient map we're talking about. She did say before showing this method that some other artists probably also use this method, but I had never seen any other webtoon shades like this at the time. Nowadays, however, I do sometimes see the shading method used in webtoons, although it is still rare. The greatest thing about shading with gradient map layers is that you can change the indicators and colors anytime you want, and we all know by now that I'm extremely indecisive. Now that that's explained, I'll go back to introducing my new theories. I wanted to shade light and highlight on one layer because I thought that using the multiplied white gradient method that I just explained, all to shade was too much effort. You could layer template it if you have X, but I have Pro so I'd have to auto action it, and auto actions don't save edits made on the canvas, so I'd have to manually bucket the bottom layer white each time, which takes 2 seconds, but still. It's technically 3 layers even if we're only painting on one of them, so if we're gonna have to create 3 new layers anyway, might as well do everything on it. So this method is different in the way that we're not using multiply because overlay, soft light, and hard light are the only blending modes that this is even possible in, hard light being the most realistic for us to use, and because we can't multiply, we can't use the white layer, which means we can't only use black, we'd have to use grays too. 
I just accidentally found out that we can use gradient map sets as gradient tools. I thought we couldn't because we can't drag a gradient map to the toolbox or add it from the toolbox because they're separate categories I guess, but apparently we can just input them individually from the detailed advanced settings. And the reason why I use gradient tools is because they're an extremely quick and easy way to make your illustrations look pretty. Make sure your edge process is set to not draw so it doesn't dominate your whole canvas. Don't do what I did though, I was just being an idiot. The gradient should go after the shading, but at least since I made that mistake, we now know that if you apply a gradient before or after, you can just use black because the color changes, you don't have to use grays. Which makes sense because it's not the white that makes this possible, it's really any color, but we use white on multiply because it becomes transparent the more you know. So I guess if we're gonna sell shade we would do it with a low opacity pen or one that varies although traditional cell shading is basically impossible to use with a gradient map because it's single colored and hard so it wouldn't be soft enough to color change i would suggest applying the gradient after so that you can erase without affecting the gradient you know what though, the fastest way is to not really shade at all. But if you were to shade, you could either use black and gradient after, or use black and white. I realize you kind of have to gradient before you shade to retain full control, if that makes any sense. You'll know what I mean if you ever try it out. I forgot, I still need to explain my second method. It's pretty simple. Make a fill layer to put everything in the shade. Instead of shading, we're lighting because everything is already in the dark. So we're clipping the gradient map to a lighting layer instead. I don't really know why I thought this was a good idea. It looks prettier because it is lighting. I suppose it's good for artists who light better than they shade and they don't really want to do both. Can we do this on the same layer? That looks very strange for sure, although if you go look at something else and then look at it again, it kinda looks okay. Maybe there's a niche of people that will like it. You could also cell shade, lock transparent pixels, and apply atmosphere lighting softly, but I feel like that's too much work. I want to do everything in one step, so don't do all of the soft shading I did before cell shading. You really don't need it. What if I just leave it like this and don't cell shade? Then it would be the fastest, which is a great idea because then it would look dry. Just softly put some colors down and move on. Why didn't I do this sooner? The eyes do need to be highlighted though or else they would look depressed. At the end, we do need to apply a gradient map layer on top of everything to unify the overall colors. This is not something we can skip, it looks complete shit otherwise. I suggest overlay or soft light. Can I use the gradient on my gradient tool though? I figured out how to add maps as tools, but I still don't know how to add tools as maps. Oh. I figured it out. Whoa, you know how sometimes when you hold shift, it brings up this strange line? I never knew what it did, but I just unintentionally found out. 
I uselessly put too much effort into this episode only to redo things over and over again, so it took much longer than I thought and now I'm exhausted mostly because I've been going to sleep at around 6 to 9 am for weeks. But it's done now. Wait no, I'm not done, I forgot. I'm done now. So now that that's done, we gotta export it. I'm gonna try PNG and if it's too much, I'll do JPG. What's ICC profile? Change the width to 800, export as one continuous page because Webtoon finally has a page cut feature so we don't have to use croppy anymore. Wait, what happened? I pressed enter, what did I do now? Oh, by pages, they mean the page feature that is only available on X. So this is right, export pages separately. It's 6 megabytes, which is fine, I think we're allowed up to 20. Why is it so jaggy? Did I do something wrong? Maybe it's supposed to be like this. Yeah, it gets jaggy if I zoom in too much. The fuck did my background go? I was just missing. What did I do? Oh, I probably didn't change the edge process of this gradient tool. Why does this panel just look so awful to me? Can I fix it? Maybe I can try covering it up with all the light. I think it's the colors, like does he have to be wearing green shoes? Oh well, there's nothing wrong now, everything is fine. The genre is comedy romance. Title? Ninja Art Academy. Wait, wasn't an export option in Clip Studio? This is different from what I imagined. It's just resources. I hope I spelled that right. What is the summary? I have an ending in mind, but I never really thought about the point of the story. In a world? In a world. Obsessed? That sounds strange. Controlled. Well, they're not really controlled. This is free will. Focused? More like hyper-focused. Is it hyper-focused or hyper-focused? Does that make sense? This is bad because I don't even have series thumbnails. Can I use that character I made ages ago? But she's standing like a robot. What should the thumbnail be? I can't even use this for the thumbnail, it has to be 1080 pixels. So I guess I have to use the project file. Shit, it's more than 500 kilobytes. I gotta save it as a JPG. These aren't even actual characters in the story, but I guess I have to use them for the vertical thumbnail. They're too big. Can I fix it? Can it not move around side to side? I am so paranoid. What if something like this happens? So I gotta do this in a very strange way, little by little. Little by little. Damn it. Does everyone read the community and privacy policy? Webtoon collects your personal information about online activities on every site you visit that's not even related to the Webtoon website. What the heck, Webtoon? Wait, they live- I mean, they don't live in this building. Why do you need records of the things that I bought? And of course they collect your browsing and search history to share with others. What even are aptitudes? Talent? You wanna know if I have talent? <laughs> they don't even have a personalized homepage, right? What's the point of analyzing so much? They also alert social media for information about you, sold personal information about you for commercial purposes, meaning they sold your information just to sell your information. No other reason. But 
but money. There's no point in selling my information to Google, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and TikTok because I don't use any of those. I can opt out. What? You want me to pay because you can't unconsensually profit off of me anymore? They're saying if I switch browsers, they will continue to sell my information and also if I don't erase cookies on the browser I'm using now. There is no opt-out option on this request form. Sure, I agree, as long as you accept my request, and if not, I guess there's nothing I can do about it. Recommended size is 160 by 151, that's specific. This panel is pretty enough. Hold shift to lock aspect ratio. No, are you serious? Maybe I can fix it from here with my mouse. I just wanted it to be one. Min Giard Academy. That is the spelling, right? Let's check it to make sure it's okay. Yeah, that's fine. So, what did we learn from this experiment? The fastest way to make a webtoon in practice is a basic story, limited character design, low pen pressure, non-textured pen, asset materials, references, 3D models are questionable because they took so long to set up, not really shading but dabbing some colors down, a whole lot of efficient features, an all capitalized font style, and export to webtoon from Clip Studio. I hope this video helped you and you also had fun watching it. Thank you for watching and subscribe if you want to see future videos. Bye!